Hi, my dear friends, welcome to our study in the book of Zechariah, chapter number 9, part 3. We are glad this moment, this season of our life, which God has graced us that uh, we may study the word of God and we may bring good news to us by grace of God, by love of God, by power of God. Blessed are the here that here, so this moment, I take this opportunity to welcome you that we may hear that which our maker has given us. My prayer to us is that uh, we are going to be the people who have ears that hear and the people who have eyes that see. Because the eye that see and the hear that hear, God is the one who created it. So you are welcome. And if you are new, I request you to check in your previous study uh, in the book of Zechariah so that you may interact with the word of God and the word of God is alive, the word of God is powerful, God is faithful, and God is going to keep his word all the time, provided uh, we take in of what we hear, and provided that we are willing to obey the word of God. So you are welcome in the name of Jesus, and let us study together. Part 1 of Zechariah chapter 9, we considered verses 1 to 8, whereby we found out God was bringing judgment to the neighboring country, and by grace of God, we found out that uh, when people wrong us, we are supposed to forgive them, to pray for them, and then we leave vengeance to God. And God is a perfect vengeance. He knows how to protect and to preserve his people. So if you are there and you have a number of people who have done something wrong to you, forgive them as Christ Jesus has forgiven us. We are going to forgive as we have been forgiven. We forgive because we realize how much we have gone astray, and God has always been forgiving us. Part 2, we considered Zechariah chapter 9, verses 9 to 11, and it was a wonderful message, which we found out the promise of coming Messiah, who came in humility, who came uh, humbling himself. And even when he was entering Jerusalem, he ride on a, a donkey, a young one of a donkey as a sign of humility and we found out also we are called to humility and when we humble ourselves before the Lord God has promised that he is going to lift us up so whatever we do we should have the attitude of our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ who always depended on God the Father who always never did anything to glorify himself but to bring the glory to the Father in the name of Jesus, and we studied that, and we found out that this is only possible when we remain connected to the true vine, who is Jesus Christ. And today, we want to pick from verse 12 of Zechariah chapter 9 to 17. So I welcome you, and my prayer to us is that the word of God will dwell in us richly, that we are going to put it into practice, so that it may bring fruit that God has promised to us. We are not only going to be the hearers of the word of God, but we are going also to be the practitioners of the word of God so that we may reap the benefit therein. I read the scripture, turn you to the stronghold, you prisoners of hope, even to the day do I declare that I will read a double unto you. When I have bent Judah for me, filled the bow with Ephraim and raised up the sons, O Zion against the sons, O oh, Greece, and made they as the sword of a mighty man. And the Lord shall be seen over them, and his arrows shall go forth as the lightning. And the Lord God shall blow the trumpet, and it shall go with the winds of the south. The Lord of hosts shall defend them, and they shall devour and subdue with his league stones. And they shall drink and make a noise as drew wine, and they shall be filled with the bows, and as the corners of the altar, and the Lord their God shall save them in that day as the flock of his people, for they shall be as the stones of a crown, lifted up as an ensign upon his lad. For how great is his goodness, and how great is his beauty. Corn shall make the young men cheerful, and the new wine be, and, and the new wine the means. So here, in this text, we are seeing the invitation of God's promises 
to favor Israel. And the prophet now, uh, having taught them about uh, the, the return out of captivity, to attribute their deliverance to the blood of the covenant of the promise of Messiah, who would come and be a blessing to them, now he comes to encourage them with the prospect of a, a joyful and a happy uh, settlement and the glorious times before them. As such happiness, they did their joy in great uh, goodness for that time. So we see that these promises have their full accomplishment when Jesus Christ came, because Christ Jesus is the ultimate of all the promises of God. They are invited to look unto Christ and to flee unto him as their city of refuge. Pastor of says, turn you to the strong old. So Jesus Christ is the strong old. He is our hope. Turn you to the strong old, you prisoners of hope. So then you start and return out of captivity into their old land, were yet in effect but prisoners. We, they, yeah, they, was, they, they, were, they were imprisoned. The Bible chapter 9, but that, 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 that 6 says that yet prisoners of oath or expectation for God had given them a little reviving in their bondage. We see also in Ezra 98, which says, And now for a little space grace has been sowed from the Lord our God to leave us a remnant to escape and to give us a nail in his holy place that our God may lighten our eyes and give us a little reviving in bondage. So it is God who had preserved them those 70 years, and God was with them, and God would encourage them, and God would see them through. The March chapter 9, verses 36 says, Behold, we are a servant this day, and for the land that you gave unto our fathers, to eat the fruit thereof, and the good thereof, behold, we are a servant in it. So uh, when these people returned, they recognized that it is the Lord, who had preserved them, it is the Lord who had kept them. So now, both these are directed to turn their eyes upon the Messiah, to set before them in the promise as their stronghold, to shelter themselves in him, and stay themselves upon him, for the perfecting of the mercy which by his grace, and for his own sake, was so glorious uh, when he was to, to come and save them completely. Isaiah chapter 45 uh, Verse 22 says that, Look unto me, and then be all of you saved, all the ends of the earth. For I am God, and there is none else. So this invitation, which the Jews who are being invited, it is much applicable to us today, in 21st century, the year 2023, and the years to come, as it was to them. That uh, God is inviting each and every one of us, that we may look unto him, so that we may be saved. Not only one person, not only one generation, but all the ends of the earth. For he is God, and there is no, none else like him. So our God is incomparable. He is a God who welcomes everyone to come. And you always remember that when Jesus came, he came to save the whole world. But the only condition is this faith. Whoever believes in him may not perish, but have everlasting life. So when we look unto Jesus, we are saved, we are delivered, we are given victory, we are given success, we are given the Holy Spirit who becomes our comforter, our strengthener, our standing by, our helper, our advocate, and our counsel together also being our comforter and our intercessor in each and every aspect of our life. So the promise of the Messiah was the stronghold of the faithful long before his coming. They saw his day at a distance and they were glad. The believing expectation of the redemption in Jerusalem was long the support and the consolation of Israel. Luke chapter 2, verse 58, verse 25 and 38 has this to say, At the build there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simon, and the same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Spirit was upon him. Verse, verse 35 says that this, Yeah, as a son shall appear through your own soul also, that the thought of many art may be revealed. So many people and the hope of coming Messiah, and they knew that it is the coming of Messiah who would bring perfect peace and comfort to the people of Israel. 
So they are in their dangers and the distresses were ready to turn towards this and the other creature for relief, but the prophet directed them still to turn to Christ and to comfort themselves with the joy of their king coming to them with salvation. But as their deliverance was typical of our redemption by Christ. So whatever was happening to the Israel, it was a picture of what God was doing and was to do with the whole world. So this invitation to the stronghold speaks the language of the gospel of God. Sinners are prisoners, but they are prisoners of oath. Their case is sad, but it is not desperate yet now. There is hope in Israel concerning them. Christ is our stronghold for us. He is our strong tower in whom they may be safe. And also us. They here refer to Israel, even us. When we run to Christ Jesus, we are safe and we receive the comfort. Uh, and in him, the wrath of God is taken away. The curse of the law is taken away. The failures of the law is taken away. In him, we are justified. In him, we are accepted. So to him, they must turn by, by faith to him. They must flee and, and trust in his name. So this moment, this generation of, uh, of ours, we are being called upon to flee to Jesus, who is a strong old. He is, he is, he is the, the refuge. He is the right security. It is in him now where we are secure. Elsewhere, there is no security. It is only a fake security. But in Christ Jesus, there is security which, which can be trusted, which is an everlasting uh, security. They are a sword of God's favor to them. Even today, do I declare, when things are at the worst and you think you, your case is desperate, it cannot be. You see as if there is no hope. You see as if there is nothing good. O oh, Jerusalem, to every one of your prisoners of hope, I will give you comfort, double to the sorrows you have experienced, blessings double to what I have ever bestowed upon your fathers. When their condition was at the best, the glory of your latter state, as well as of your latter house, shall be greater. So these promises were so timely to the Israelites, because they had lost it all. When they were taken to captivity, they had really lost everything which they had. They had lost their, their building, they had lost their identity, they had lost their name, they had lost all things physically which can be ever mentioned. And God promises them here that he would give them double portion. And actually the Christ Jesus, when the Messiah came, and we believe in him, then our failures are substituted with his special blessings in the heavenly places. And we are given more than we ever think or imagine in the Christ Jesus. So, so you see these promises, the fullness of time, uh, God here promises to the Jews victory, plenty, and joy in their own land. Of course, these promises, apart from now the bigger picture of Jesus Christ are coming and being a blessing to the whole world, to the people who believe in him, and restoring mankind back to God. Also, these promises, they are for Israel as a nation, because God has not yet completed his dealing with Israel. But now to us who are the heaviest, uh, these promises, they are, they, they are a part of us also through Christ Jesus. And in Christ Jesus, there is glorious victory. There are riches, there are joys in the kingdom of Christ. So if you are outside, uh, I really want to appeal to you this moment, this season, that uh, it is important for you to hear the word of God. And blessed are the ear that hear. And when you hear the word of God, you believe. Since faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. And when you hear the word of God, you believe it and you call upon the name of the Lord. And you are going to be saved. And when you are saved, you receive glorious victory. You receive riches. You receive joy. You receive the, uh, the, the kingdom which can never be shaken. You receive the kingdom which is everlasting. You receive the power of the Holy Spirit to live a victorious life every day and every moment of your life. In the name of Jesus. So welcome home uh, through Christ Jesus. He is inviting you to come. And when you call upon him, he is going to receive you. In the name of Jesus. So they shall triumph over their enemies. The Jews, after their return, were surrounded with so many enemies. All sides. They were, they were actually uh, 
at danger. Or it not for the Lord, the enemies would have really swallowed them alive. There were the Assyrians, there were the Egyptians, there were the Grecian monarchy, and there were dangers all over. But now God promises them that uh, he would deliver them, he would keep them, he would preserve them, he would protect them against all the difficulties, all the struggles which they, which they were going through. So even you, this moment, this season of, of our life, no matter the struggles you could be going through, remember there is a greater God than all the troubles, than all the difficulties which you could be facing in your life. All what we need it is to understand that God is working out everything for our God, for our good. And God has promised that no temptation will ever overtake us except what is common to man. And God is always faithful that in every temptation, He will always provide a way of escape so that now the difficulties of this life do not overwhelm us. So God knows our strength. He knows what we can be able to bear. So never give up. But fix your eyes unto Jesus and remember God is faithful. And in every temptation which you face, God will always provide a way of escape. So there is always a way of escape for us when we face difficulties, when we face challenges of this life. So for the Israelites, that they shall be instruments in God's hands for the defeating and the, the baffling of their persecutors. I have bent Judah for me as my bow of steel. That bow I have filled with Ephraim as my arrows. I have drawn it up to his full bed till the arrow at the end. For some think that this meant a uh, fulfilling of the expression here are very fine and the figures lively. So Judah had been taught the use of bow, and Ephraim had been famous for it. But let them not think that they gain their successes by their own bow. For they, they themselves are no more than God's bow and his arrows tools in his heart, which he makes use of and manages as he pleases. So uh, these two tribes, Judah and Ephraim, they had the knowledge, they had the skills of using the bows. And God here makes them to recognize that uh, the success they had, it was not out of their own scale, but it is God who was with them. It is God who gave them victory. It is God who gave them success. So it is always important even for us to realize that uh, any achievement which we do, it is not by power, it is not by mighty, but it is by the Spirit of the Lord. Any success which you have, remember, there is God who has given you that success. And now as a result, God requires to be acknowledged in all things because He is the one who gives us success. Thanks be to God who gives us success, who gives us victory, in Christ Jesus. So the word of God which we preach even now as I'm bringing the word of God, it is not by power, it is not by might, but it is by the spirit of the Lord. And it is God who is working in me both to do and to will. Not only me, all the ministers of the gospel of Christ Jesus, it is God who use them as instruments, as vessels. And now none of them should receive the glory. The glory should be unto our God all the time. It is God who use people as instrument. It is important for us now to understand that, to realize that uh, God uses people as vessels of honor. And even you, if you agree with him, if you accept the work of God which he did for you and for me through Christ Jesus, then he is going to make you a vessel which is valuable, which is useful for his master, for his use to the glory and honor of God. Men always they have the tendency of not seeing God, but seeing the instrument which God used. It is important for you in everything to see God through the life of the people. Even you become a blessing to your life in the name of Jesus. Revelation chapter 6 verses 2 says that, And I saw, and the behold, a white us, and he that sat your name and a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. So, we see here that victory comes from the Lord because we see even this uh, horse, the white horse, uh, he having the bow conquering and being a conqueror. So this, of course, had to do with even these monarchies who were coming in, in conquering and being conquered 
Remember, later on we found out that they were the monarchy of Babylonian who were ruling. And of course, they were related to Israel. They were conquered by Mendes and the Persians. Later on, the, the Mendes and the Persians were conquered by the Greeks. And the Greeks were, were conquered by the Romans. And the process continued. Uh, of course, God was working through all these monarchies. God was still at work. He preserved his people. And actually, his people did exploit from the famous scripture. Even during the time of Antiochus, uh, we see God raising the family of Maccabees, who resisted uh, the, 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 the work of the evil of these kings, and they, they resisted them. They resisted the, even the, 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 the Greeks, and they fought for, for their city because they could not withstand when the, the, the temple of the Lord was being defiled by these ungodly people. So, so, so God was with them. God was there to strengthen them, to stand with them, and to give them victory. Hallelujah. Psalmist noted this in the book of Psalms, chapter 17, verses 13, that Arise, O Lord, disappoint him, cast him down, deliver my soul from the wicked, which is your sword. So the Lord delivers us. It is the Lord who gives us victory. Uh, were it not for the Lord then, none of us would have, would have conquered. But it is the Lord who fight for us. It is the Lord who give us victory. And in Christ Jesus, we are victorious. We have overcome. We are also told that God will be captain and commander in chief over them in every expedition and engagement. Verse 14. The Lord shall be see over them. He shall make it appear that he presides in their affairs and that in all their motions they are under his direction as apparently though not as sensibly as he was seen over Israel in the pillar of cloud and the fire when he led them through the wilderness. So is their army to be raised or mustered and brought into the field? So the Lord shall blow the trumpet together, the forces together to proclaim the war, to sound the alarm and to give directions which way to march, which way to move for. If God blow the trumpet, it is will not give a certain sound, nor a fever in the effect so on. Is the army taking the field and entering upon the action? Whatever enterprise the campaign is opened with, God shall go forth at the end of their forces, and he is going to fight for them. And where God is fighting, he always wins. So God has never failed, and he will never fail. So that's why God promises us that you will never forsake us, you will never leave us, you will never fail us. So come to him in humility, in faith, and remain in him. And you are assured victory in your areas of your life in the name of Jesus. So God's arrow shall go forth as lightning so strongly, so suddenly, so irresistibly. His lightning shall go forth as arrows and scatter them. That is, he shot out his lightning and discomfited them. So this, of course, alludes to that which God had done for Israel of old when he brought them out of Egypt uh, with mighty art, and when he also drove out the enemies of God who are living in the land of Canaan, who had rebelled against God for many years and who had turned to wickedness. And as a result now, God fought for his people and they, they, were over, or they, they, they overcame them. So... So yeah, they, they, they are being told that uh, if not for the Lord, then the enemy would have really defeated them. Verse 15 of Zechariah chapter 5 uh, says, that, uh, says that the Lord of hosts shall defeat them and they shall devour and subdue with his sling stone and they shall drink and make a noise as through wine and they shall be filled with like bowls as the corners of the altar. And the Lord their God shall save them in that day as the flock of his people, for they shall be as the stones of a crown lifted up as an explicit sign upon his land. For how great is his goodness and how great is his beauty. Corn shall make the young men tearful and new wine the, the means. So you see these wonderful promises, and God declares that he is the one 
who is going to do it. He is the one who is going to be their prom their security. He is the one who is going to save them that day from all their dangers. Hallelujah. So God is our savior. He is our protector. He is our sustainer. He is our defender. He is our refuge. He is our closest friend. He is our deliverer. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. So their enemies hoped to swallow them alive. But God says that he would turn them. He would, he, he would protect them. And that their weapons would not prevail against them. Because the Lord was with them. I remember Israelites had been uh, under attack by the enemies all the years. But God used to fight for them. He used to make them conquerors. And even today, when God is with us, no matter how much the enemy try to fight us, I always remember that when we are in Christ Jesus, you have overcome. Uh, Paul declared that in Christ Jesus, we are super conquerors. Romans chapter 8, verse 37. So we have already overcome. We are on the winning side. We are victorious in over Satan, over death, over the evil one, over wickedness, over the lies of the enemy. We are victorious in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. And the glory to God. So they shall triumph in their God. And they shall take the comfort and give God the glory of their successes. Verse 15 of Zechariah chapter 9. They shall eat and they shall rejoice in quietness. So what they have got, God will give them power to eat it after they have subdued the, the sling stone. That is, there are enemies that slang stones at them. And they shall drink and make a noise, a noise, a joyful noise before the Lord, their maker and the protector, as through wine, as men are merry at a banquet of wine. So being not drunk with the wine, which is excess, but filled with the Spirit, they shall speak to themselves and one to another in his psalms and hymns and his spiritual songs as though that they are drunk to do with the vain and the foolish songs. So God tells us that in the book of Ephesians chapter 5, verses 18, be, and be not drunk with the wine, wherein is excess, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourself in his psalms and the hymns and the spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things unto God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So this is the call which we are being called that we should be sober, we should be filled with the Holy Spirit, singing psalms and the hymns and the spiritual songs, singing and making melody in our hearts to the Lord, and giving thanks always unto God for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. That is the kind of lifestyle which we have received, and God is calling us to live in the name of Jesus. So in the love he has for them, and the relationship which they stand at him, that they are the flock of his people, and he is their shepherd, that they are to him as the stones of crown, which are very precious and of great value, which are, which are kept under strong guard. Never was any kind, any king so pleased with the jewels of his crown as God is, and will be with his people, who are near and dear unto him, and in whom he glories. So they are a crown of glory and of royal design. Isaiah chapter 62, verse 2 and 3 says, And the Gentiles shall see your righteousness, and all the kings your glory, and you shall be called by, by a new name, which, which the mouth of the Lord shall name. You shall also be a crown of glory in the hand of the Lord, and a royal this deed in the heart of God. So we are precious. God had selected Israel to be his people, and even today God has called us to be his own people. And we are precious before him. And God uh, rejoices to give us victory and success because we bear his name. And God is a mighty conqueror in him. He, he has never been defeated. And when we are in him, we are assured victory all the days of our life. Actually, we are on the winning side because God is a God of war. Isaiah chapter 11, verse 10 and 12 says, And in that day there shall be a root of Jesse, which shall stand for an explicit sign of the people. To, to it shall the Gentiles seek, and his rest shall be glorious. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand against the second time to recover the remnant of his people, 
which shall be left from Assyria and from Egypt and from Padro and from Kusi and from Elam and from Shina and from Amman and from the island to the sea. So you see here the promise of Messiah. And in that promise now, God declares that he would gather all his people from wherever they had been scattered and he would bring them home. And of course, even the Gentiles would seek him. Of course, today, many people have believed in Jesus Christ who are not Jews uh, because it is God's will to save the whole world through faith and through the preaching of the message of our Lord and our Savior, uh, Jesus uh, Christ. So we are seeing the, the success, the success uh, of, of, of God's people. Verse 17 of Zechariah chapter 9. For how great is his goodness and how great is his beauty. Verse 17 of Zechariah chapter 9 verse 17. This is the substance, this is the burden of the songs uh, which we should praise the Lord. So to admire and praise the, um, the, the, the goodness of the Lord, how great is his beauty. So God, all the perfection, all the beauty, all the good is found in God. So we should always glorify God and honor God and admire God because he is full of affection. So they are to aim as the stones of crown, but what is he to them? Our business in the temple is to behold the beauty of the Lord. Psalm is declared in the Psalms, in the book of Psalms, chapter 27, verses 4. One thing have I desired of the Lord that we rise seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. So when you observe goodness of the Lord and the beauty of God, God is the perfection of all beauty because he is the one who created all things and everything good is perfected in God. So how far does it transcend all the beauties, particularly the beauty of his holiness? This Actually, this refers to Messiah. Uh, as we see here in, in Isaiah chapter 33, verse 17, which says, Your eyes shall see the king in his beauty. They shall behold the land that is far off. So the king here, the savior, is the perfection of all beauty. And when you actually you behold him, uh, you cannot even withstand his beauty in your carnality. So Jesus Christ is the perfection of all beauty. So to admire, to admire and give thanks for the gift of God's favor and the grace is beauty, uh, is great, is goodness, is grace, is rich in mercy. It is so wide, it's so plenty, it's so great, it's so glorious. Uh, so that is what we should do all the time. The provision of God upon our life, uh, the, the protection, the preservation, the goodness, the redemption, the perfection, the hope, the future that we have in our Savior, the gift of the Holy Spirit, the hope, the, the caring, the, the concern He has for our life. All that should make us to glorify him and to be cheerful uh, because he is our God and he is our good father and he is our loving father. He will never leave us. He will never seek us all the days of our life. Glory to Jesus. Remember these promises which were promised to Israel. These promises now have been perfected through our Savior, Jesus Christ. So if we are in Christ Jesus, all these promises are of God, they are yours and all the time. Recognize that the promises of God are good for you, and they are a yes and amen. So the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord open your eyes to see the beauty and the glory of our Lord, and to recognize that uh, we are delivered, we are super conquerors through Christ Jesus, who loves us and who came to gather us to God the Father. And in Christ Jesus now, we are accepted, and we can do all things we have overcome through him who loves us and who gave himself for us. So my prayer to you this moment is that if you are there and you have not yet recognized Jesus Christ to be Lord and the Savior of your life, I want to submit to you this moment, this season of our life, that uh, it begins by you acknowledging and accepting the gift of salvation which God has provided for you. Remember, salvation is a gift. It is something which you cannot pay. It is, a, it is something which should be received with gladness and joy. So it is, a, it is a gift. Gift is only meaningful when it is accepted and then when it is appropriated for the 
for, for the specific use which it was decided for. So God has already done all what he was supposed to do for you and to me. What is needed, it is for us now to take aim at his word and to receive aim by faith. And when we receive aim, we are accepted uh, uh, in him in the name of Jesus. So wherever you are this moment, we are now in, in, the, in the year 2023, March. I, I, I invite you to welcome Jesus Christ to come in your home to dine and to live in you, and you call upon him. And when you call upon him, you are going to be saved in the name of Jesus. My prayer to us is that when we hear the word of God, we are not going to add in our heart, but we shall receive the word of God with gladness. And then when we receive the word of God, we continue glorifying God and, build, uh, and dwelling in him. As we received Christ Jesus, then we are to remain in him uh, and to, to, to praise him, to glorify him, and to be sober in all the days of our life, to be filled with the Holy Spirit as we sing psalms and the hymns and glorify God and be thankful in our heart in each and every aspect of our life. So the Lord bless you and keep you and remember the grace to do that which God has, has called you to do is already there through faith in His Savior, in His Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and to intercede for us and through Him now, we live and we glorify our Father in the name of Jesus. The Lord be with you and keep you. Remember to continue to study the word of, of God by yourself and also to apply it for your life and also to teach others so that you may benefit from the blessings of the word of God. Also remember to share this message with the other brethren that we may continue being a blessing to one another as the Lord blesses us and as the Lord keeps us and as, 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 as the Lord sustains us and as we continue to glorify God and to honor him and to live in him through faith in his son Jesus Christ. Bye bye. See you in the, in the next presentation as we continue exploring the book of Zechariah, uh, the remaining uh, five chapters.